Hey, welcome to the pod. Today I am talking to Leah Ray Getz. Leah Ray Getz is the co-owner and co-founder of Digital Trailblazers with her husband, Todd. And they specialize in helping experts, coaches, and entrepreneurs create, launch, and scale online courses and coaching programs. They started their own online business back in 2016, and after launching their first course, they scaled to sales to multiple six figures with only a six-month time frame. Their expertise ranges from branding to funnel design to paid and organic traffic strategies, and they are on a mission to help people who can make a positive impact in others' lives reach more people, and in doing so, impact millions. Hey, Ray, welcome to the pod. Hello, so good to be here. I'm excited to have this conversation today in our off-the-air conversation, behind-the-scenes private chat. We talked about, I think, the issue that we're seeing with quote-unquote creators, quote-unquote coaches, quote-unquote consultants. And I don't say that they're not consultants, they're coaches, but they're not getting paid what they're worth, and they're not getting that consistently. Lead gen, Mm -hmm. growth, sales. And I think that's an issue. I think that's a real issue. I saw, I'd have to quote the source. I don't know the source, Mm -hmm. but that SaaS companies that were focused on the creator economy are starting to peter off and not get the successes that they were seeing when the creator economy was at the type because it turns out that creators and coaches or consultants on average aren't making the revenue that they need to sustain the fees of these SaaS companies. But I'll have to find the actual source for that. So fact check me on that one. Mm -hmm. But I think it still stems to an issue that we're seeing in the marketplace. And I kind of want to get your take on the issue and why it exists. Yeah. So there is a huge issue of there's a flood of people who get into coaching and they get certified or they've just been through some something in their life where they can help people. I really desire to help and spread their knowledge, their expertise through coaching. However, a large quantity of those people never figure out how to get paying clients. Hmm. And it's very unfortunate because the reality is they've got great expertise that could truly help people, whether that's in losing weight, getting in shape, helping their relationships, their careers, their businesses, like whatever their thing is. They've got good value, but most never figure out the sales and marketing side to get clients regularly coming through the door to create the full-time income and business that they're looking for. So it's mostly on the top of the funnel, the awareness, because I think in the when I like collaborate or have friends or even past coaching clients that I work with, like they're experts. Don't get me wrong. They know their craft. They're really good at what they do. They've been in the industry and they want to transition out of a job or they want to transition out of doing what they're doing services and go more on the advisory side. They're good at what they do, but they're not unlocking what I think to be is like the question of every business, the the lifeblood is how, where do I get my leads from? And I think we, let's demystify that because you've, you've done this. I've seen behind the scenes, uh, growing companies, doing direct response, yeah. agency work, et cetera. So I've, we've seen that, but let's demystify it and kind of gear it towards what works now in 2023 versus right. what used to work in the heyday of 2027 or 27. Yeah. yeah. So right now, so we're seeing a lot of people that have this false belief that I am just going to be a coach. I'm going to, I just want someone to set up my marketing for me. I want someone to do this, that, and the other thing. I'm going to stay in my zone of genius. If you truly only want to market, that means you only want to coach. That means you you don't want to own a business because a business owner wears a lot more hats Mm -hmm. than just delivery. If you only want to coach, then you need to go get a job for someone who has the business who's looking for coaches to fill seats. If you want a coaching business yourself, you have to get prepared to wear all the different hats until you're making fifty, a hundred thousand dollars a month, where you can start to bring on those team members mm-hmm. that are skilled enough who can join hands with you and take on those other things. So what's working today? I think we're seeing a bit of a shift in this space where you're really working in it, creating an ecosystem. I think there was more of a time a few years ago where driving traffic, so getting in front of people using a Facebook ad, Instagram, any sort of traffic source that you want, but driving traffic into a VSL, a video sales letter, Mm -hmm. something that gets people introduced and then tells them to book a call if they want to, to learn more. Those worked really well a few years ago. What we're seeing now is people having much more success, creating 
thinking more holistically about their marketing and what they're doing and creating more of an overall ecosystem. So yes, you should be driving traffic. That's the lifeblood of your business. And leads and traffic are one of the biggest problems and challenges holding people back, coaches back from getting sales. But you shouldn't just be relying on that. You need to get them in other places where they can be further nurtured. So for example, for us, we drive a ton of traffic. And I say Facebook, but it's Facebook slash Instagram, right? It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we drive a ton of traffic. And with that, not only are we generating leads, we're collecting name, email, phone number. We are also getting them into a Facebook group through that same funnel. Mm -hmm. um, we are connecting with them in, on uh, via text message. We are also, in, in when they join the Facebook group, part of their instructions are to send me a friend request. Well, I don't know if you know this, but when someone sends you a friend request on Facebook, they automatically start following. You start following them. Mm -hmm. They're content, like you can post content on Facebook. So now my professional level personal profile on mm -hmm. Facebook, where I'm creating reels and, and um, content all the time, so they're getting hit with that. So they're getting the emails, they're getting the text messages, they're getting the content in the live trainings in the group. They're getting the reels and all the, it is a holistic ecosystem of going from not knowing you at all, all of a sudden to very hot and warmed up in just a matter of days and ready to, to take the next step. And so that sort of holistic um, view is working really well in today's busy marketplace. I love that because it's not, it's, so it's a lead nurture funnel, the top of the funnel, driving into a Facebook group with engagement. I'm not sure if you're doing a challenge funnel or if you're doing five day exercises with the call to action. We'll, we'll figure that out in a second and kind of dissect that. But the fact that you're bringing them back to organic nurture, like the, just the, the quote unquote organic old school way of building relationships, seeing content, resonating with that mm -hmm. content, saying, hey, this person knows what they're talking about. Maybe I should learn more. I have a few been seeing different pieces and in, in, in parts and working with multiple people. I'd love to kind of throw some rebuttals at you, even though I know some of the answers. But yeah. I want to kind of get your take on this because it is fascinating. And I see and I, yeah. one of the teams that we're working with right now. Oh, my audience is not on Facebook. My audience is not on IG. So how do you address that? Like maybe you might, I do coaching for professionals, B2B. I do coaching for this type of person. They're not on Facebook. They're not there. Like, how do you address that? Like how, and of so course the, there, there are those niches that aren't, but I kind of want to get your take on that. Yeah. The vast majority of people are on Facebook. Let's be real. However, like we have a client that uh, we work with who specifically works with executives, like they are uh, very large companies. Okay, if you're an executive of a Fortune 500 or whatever, okay, maybe you're too busy to be on Facebook. I got it. But if you're at that level, it's going to be highly referral based. LinkedIn has opportunities. You have to find out where your people are. The vast majority of people can drive traffic uh, with Meta and, and crush it. If you are in the B2B space or you're doing something where you're high level executives, then you will be doing a lot more referral base. You'll be connecting with people and finding just where they hang out online, right? Mm -hmm. So if they do, execs don't hang on Instagram or, or LinkedIn either, right? Mid-level yeah. managers, directors, maybe potentially, but real executives, they don't do that. They're they do on. email, they're on email all day. Yeah. So you have to just know where your people are and meet them there. So, but the vast majority of people can successfully drive traffic with Meta and crush it. You might have a space that YouTube is hot. Absolutely, mm. use YouTube traffic. But find something, find where your people are and really dial in on one source of traffic first before you branch out and try to be everywhere because that's where you're really going to get lost and overwhelmed. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Are you primarily working with B2C uh, clients or... Let's break down that dichotomy because I think what you mentioned was really important. Like, where do your people actually hang out on? Yeah. Are you seeing more B2C? Facebook's a hot. That makes a lot of sense to me. But what's your take? Yeah. So for B2C, Facebook is hot. It, it, it just is. There's, and in the coaching space, we want to think about not just people who need help, but also people who are willing to pay, willing and able to pay for help. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's typically people close to 30 or 30 and above. And people in that age range, we're on Facebook. <laughs> you know, and that's even if it's just to communicate pictures of the kids to our parents who are states away. And so 
we are on Facebook. And so that's a really good place to be. If you're worried about, I heard such and such was hot. I heard such and such was hot. But think about your people and where they're going to be. So in general, B2C, Facebook is phenomenal or Meta is, is phenomenal for that. We do have, we do work with some uh, B2B clients. Depending on the industry, and we have B2B clients that crush it with ads with Meta as well. But again, it, it depends who your target is and how they communicate. So if they're small business owners, then there's definitely still potential to reach them on, on Facebook. Facebook. Oh, yeah. They're in Facebook groups. There's a lot of yeah. activity if there. If they are leaders or you're looking to get into large, medium to large companies, that's going to, that's a different process, right? Yeah. That's not. That's connecting at conferences, that's leveraging, getting in with the middle management and the people who you can connect with on uh, LinkedIn and all of that. And I think that's an important takeaway here is to, is am I focusing not just on the niche, but the size of the company and where yeah. the owner or the direct manager or the executive hang out on? I think that's an important takeaway. Let's talk about the user journey and the, the funnel process. I run a private mastermind or like a cohort and one of the, the gentlemen yesterday asked, how do, how do I reach out to people in that initial middle funnel to MQ, qualified lead stage. Like, how do I break the ice that way? And sometimes it's just like a dialogue. But when it comes to the top of the funnel, how are you looking to break the ice? You mentioned a Facebook group. That's more engagement. That's more community based. And I think leading with community is probably one of the best strategies to, to focus on nowadays. It'll recycle in the future, maybe five years from now. But tell us a little bit more about the user experience from the, the prospective client's view, what are they going through to build trust and affinity with a coach or an expert? So initially starting out, I think the part of why the direct, the ad to uh, a video sales letter to booking a call isn't working as well as it once was, is it's just so big of a leap, right? Mm -hmm. You just met someone and now you're going to get on a sales call with them. That's a big step for a lot of people to make. And so that requires, that's a lot of trust. And so that's why it's very challenging for people to do that. However, if you're just offering a freebie, if you're, if you're doing a basic lead mic, they run into, hey, like what I'll, I'll be giving your folks access to later are three proven funnels for high ticket coaches. Okay, so it's a PDF guide, download. It gives them all kinds of resources, tips to help them with create, setting up their own funnels and systems to close clients. So they're scrolling through Facebook. They see an ad that talks about needing funnels or coaches. Oh, I, I don't have a funnel. I, I need my systems figured out. I know that I don't have the amount of sales that I want, so I better figure this out. So they click on it. They opt in. They get the resource. They That'll go to their email. They're directed then to our Facebook group. In the Facebook group, we love on them. So <laughs> I would say 90 plus percent of the people in our Facebook group came from an ad. Okay. <laughs> it's not this whole, well, if my group's not growing, Okay, well, what are you doing to grow it? If you don't yep. just sit back and expect Facebook to grow it for you because the chances of that are slim to none. So I think we have just shy of 9,000 people in our group and at least 90% of those came were leads that we generated in our business. Yeah, so they're going to be receiving a nurture sequence in email from mm -hmm. us. On top of that, they'll be getting the broadcast emails that we send out um, at least one to a week As on top of that. But in the Facebook group now, they're going to get more training. We got all kinds of resources that we give away, are like all the best stuff for us we put in our Facebook group because that's our community. That's where we love on folks. And every week I do a live training in our Facebook group. Now, part of that live training is a call to action. And so the call to action, hey, if you think that this is fabulous and you love it, but you're going to need some more help with this, just comment an info. Let's chat, see what's going on and see how we can help you out. It's just pretty, a pretty supportive, right? So it's a uh, value-based marketing. It's generosity exactly. marketing at that point. Yep. So we, we have people on those lives typing info, and then we can get in on in Messenger and set up a, a discovery call from there. So that's one of the ways that we do that. It works really well. And the posturing, so you think of organic, right? Which is just prospecting on Facebook. But a lot of mm -hmm. uh, coaches teach that these days. I hate like true prospecting where people don't know you and you've got to try to strike up a conversation, pretend that you're interested in them. Pulled just outreach. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Every like, day. Yeah. And I like, we've run into folks who they were doing it 12 hours a day, six days a week to make wow. 
And I'm like, oh, honey, let me help you. Like, <laughs> yeah, that is an issue. Yeah, no, I get all those in my LinkedIn inbox every single day. No, it used to work. It doesn't work as much as I think no, it is. No, that's the thing with marketing. You always have to stay on the front edge of things because it's always changing. And when a lot of people do it, it gets less effective. Right? Yeah, I got to recycle the strategies. Yep. So in the true prospecting sense where you're out there connecting with people who don't know who you are, there's a, the posture and the positioning is weird because you're like mm -hmm. hunting. They don't see you as an authority, anything like that. You're just out there trying to get them. Whereas when people come from a lead magnet, they end up joining our group. They're asking for a resource or they're asking for to chat. And myself or one of my team members, we come in and we message them in Facebook. And now we have a level of authority. They truly they are already seen value from us. They recognize that we have a solution that may be able to help their problem. And that entire vibe of that conversation is completely different. And oh, it's yeah. way easier for someone to navigate than going out there and chasing after people who don't care, who don't know who you are and aren't interested. Oh, yeah. No, that's it's easier to sell people who know you and have liked you versus, hey, do you want to, to buy my thing? No, I don't even right. know who you are. Like, I like to connect with like-minded people and, oh, you've got kids. I've got kids too. Hey, are you? Oh, yeah. And you're like, oh my goodness, just it's go too much. Like the moment it's... you say like-minded, I'm like, pitch. I know <laughs> that there's some sort of pitch coming in this conversation. <laughs> That's a problem. Let's talk about some of the mechanics. So I think you mentioned a few things and I kind of want to iron those out. I want to ask about a few, because you, it's what you're saying is so simple. It is so direct. It's not easy to implement. It is like work and there is like, complications or difficulties to, to set up on the back end, but I just love how simply you laid it out. So I want to dive through that, some automation questions, and then finally a commitment question, because this can seem overwhelming and it can seem like it's a lot. So the first is, sounds to me like the strategy is to drive to a group and that group is essentially value-based to support people to get their wins, their goals, what they're trying to achieve. The, you capture email, you invite them to the Facebook group, there is a drop off and I kind of was curious, are you doing anything special to reduce the drop off? Because I've seen 50 to 60 percent opt ins mm -hmm. to Facebook group joins. What is your specialty there or focus to support that to be 90 percent plus? That's question one. The other question is he hearing this either as a coach or a creator or a consultant, it might be like, well, why should I give away my stuff for free? So can you kind of talk about that as well? Like I'm in the group, I'm helping people do wins. Oh my gosh, I have to do this once a week. That's a lot. Like this overcommitment. How do you pace yourself, but then also overcome the fear? Like, well, oh crap, I'm giving away my best stuff for free. They're never going to want to buy from me. Uh, you hear that all the time. You're like, oh, honey, you're so off. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but I, I want you to. I want. I want to take have your take on it. This is why we yeah. have the experts on the pod. Yeah, for sure. So first off, when it comes to getting people into the group, you should absolutely. As humans, we move because of a carrot or a stick. There's always a, a benefit or a pain in, in all decisions that we're making all day, every day. A great way to get people into your group is to offer them a carrot. So you've <laughs> got some free nugget, right? Some little mini training or mini course or something that you give away to get people into your group. We actually broke off a piece of our high ticket coaching program and just one course from there and we give it away to people who join our group. So when they're on the thank you page after they've opted in for the lead magnet, we're like, hey, do you want this thing? I can get it to you for free. Just join my group. And so you're, we're, we got a big old fat carrot there <laughs> ready for them. But on top of that, remember, the Facebook group is one of the ways that we're reaching them. We also have their email. We also have text message and phone number and calling. So what we do is through our email follow-ups, we're pushing them to join the group. Plus every week, so it's, Honestly, I probably spend 45 minutes a week on the whole content in my group thing. I mm. could spend less if I outsource more of it to my team, which I don't. But this is daily posts on the on, on the group or what? So I have a team that does my regular value-based posts, but they know what to say because every week for half hour, 20 minutes to a half hour, I'm live in my group giving value. So they know what I'm saying. They know my voice. They know what I'm teaching on and they create posts for me. And yeah. they go out everywhere. They go out in my group. They go out on Instagram, LinkedIn. They shoot it out everywhere. So they handle all that. Plus, my team welcomes the new members into the group, so I don't have to deal with that. 
All I do is have to decide what topic I'm going to talk about that day, schedule it, and do it. On top of that, I also email my list about it as well. Okay. This is what's coming up in this week's Thursday training or something. Exactly. So I'll be like, today, and honestly, it's like Monday morning. I'm like, crap, what am I going to do today? I'm going to do this. <laughs> and then it usually comes from a conversation I recently had with a prospect or a leader on a sales call or something, some concept. And so I email the list about it. Hey, if you want to make learn how to make, get you your first $10,000 a month in the next six weeks, join me tonight. I'll be blah, blah, blah. So yeah. we're continually reaching them that way. Plus our team is doing direct outreach on the phones. And so when someone they're when they get a hold of folks, or even if we don't get a hold of folks, we end up texting them the link to, Hey, had it hurt bad. Here's, we got great free training. Here's a link to join. So we're hitting them all It over. all leads up to the training. That training is a value pack. It's almost like a mini webinar VSL, but it's not, it's like value content. And Hey, if you want more, just message us and see what we can do to, to help yeah. you out. And, and we always say in your free stuff, you're given the what to do, not the how to do it. So, and, which is the same level that I'm giving you right now. Like, it's the what I'm telling you what to do. Now, am I doing a tutorial where I'm opening my screen and I'm That'd be saying, too long. Like, yeah. Like there, no, because that's behind a paywall. So you can take what I give you and you can go implement on your own. Or if you want actual help with the how to's, of doing that, then you pay for a mini course, you get into their process, their system, whatever. So it kind of leads into your second question. You give tons of value for free. And yeah. I like I have had we part of the brand that we have built in this space over the years is as people who don't give fluff. I'm not mm. gonna do a live training and it's just like a whole pitch fest trying to sell you something else. If I'm in, in my group loving on my people, I'm giving them good stuff. I'm telling yeah. them I'm being real. Because when you do that, you're like, wow, you, like it stands out because so many other people are just trying to get the sale and they're not trying to build a relationship. A mission or, and so when we do that, yeah, it, it really stands out for folks. And they think, wow, if their free stuff is this good, how much more awesome is their paid? Yeah, exactly. And that's what no, goes on in people. I love it. The simple, yeah. Oh, it's not like you're always polished or perfect. Like we're still learning. We're still doing. I love the example of Monday. Like, what am I going to talk about this week? Yeah. Sometimes on coaching calls. Okay. We should focus on this. I think this is what we should focus on. And then the clients will tell you, but no, I love this. So the simple practical basics are drive relationships. If you're doing a community, a Facebook group, I mean, you're keeping it on Facebook because that's where your people are at. This isn't yeah. to say you have to keep it there, but, but out of the 2 billion people that are on Facebook or how many number there are, like they're probably on there. So drive to community, give away it like a splinter offer, a freebie on the front end, get them into the community from there, post and add value throughout the week, or you can have your team. I love that strategy. I'm actually going to take that one. And then once a week, 20, 30 minutes, add value. You don't have to go into the how because that's too technical. So people might gloss over. They just want to know, but what do I need to do? What do I need to do? And then offer to help further. And I think that's a key. That's a key focus. And I love that. What, what's the one thing that most people fail to ask you that you wish they asked you because you just know so much about it that I didn't ask you? Oh, that's, that's a hard but good question. I probably along the lines of like, why, what are the key things that people are missing that are preventing these coaches and consultants from actually making money to mm -hmm. getting to their goals? I think a lot of people get stung, stuck at the, well, in my mindset, I just got to fix my mindset. Okay, yes, your mindset has to be ready. Like you have to be willing to take action. You have to see yourself as being successful, all that good stuff. However, mindset alone ain't gonna do it for you. You need hmm. an actual strategy. You need to hmm. do the work for that to, to be able to happen. And so if you fail to master marketing, and you don't have to be a master marketer, you have to master your own marketing. Hmm. You are a business. You are a business owner. Mm -hmm. You are responsible for driving traffic, generating leads, and closing sales. If you mm -hmm. don't learn how to do that, you will make no money and your business will fail. It doesn't matter how good of a coach you are. It matters how well you market it is the reality, right? For better or worse, it's the truth. If you don't know how to sell it, you're not going to help anybody and it doesn't matter. So focus on mastering your marketing, learning how to drive traffic to your mm -hmm. offer, generating leads and converting those leads into sales. If you can do those three things, 
then you can have a sustainable, long-lasting coaching business and you can even scale to very high numbers if that's your goal. I think that's something that we need to be reminded of constantly. And I love the way that you put that. It's almost like a call to arms. Like it's a responsibility that you have yes. to the business and it's something that you have to learn. And I think you can learn, but I appreciate the way that you, you put that. Well, for our listeners out there, what's the best place for people to one, thank you for being on and two, learn more about what you're up to. Well, I appreciate that. Yes. So we have that beautiful, I just mentioned the PDF earlier. So here you go. If you head to digitaltrailblazer.com, not plural, just digitaltrailblazer.com, you can, on the very top of the page, we've got our three proven coaching funnels that convert for high ticket coaching clients, high ticket coaches. So you absolutely want to grab that. There's even a link in there. You can follow through the process and we can even set up a free lead magnet funnel for you. We got all kinds of goodies connected. And of course, it's going to lead you to our Facebook group where you really want to be. So <laughs> you can just start with our main website and follow through the process. Wonderful. We'll put that link in the show note. Thanks for being on today. This was an exciting combo. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. If you found value in today's podcast, please consider sharing this with someone that you believe could also benefit from this episode. You never know, you may be the catalyst that opens them up to a new way of operating their business and experiencing life. As always, it's an honor to be a small part of your journey. This is Raul Hernandez. Do good work. <laughs>